Jean-Charles Brissard, Centre for the Analysis of Terrorism in France. France has obviously seen some horrible attacks over the last few years. How do you deal with the threat in France? Well, we've seen the threat evolving from a foreign threat, external threat, to an internal threat. And today, most of the threat against France, as it is against Europe, uh, is coming from uh, inside our, our societies. So we have to deal with this. We have, for example, in France, 18,000 individuals uh, identified as um, um, radical Islamists. So it is a big challenge that uh, requires, uh, first, the mobilization of all society, um, to, to get rid of that and to identify, to uh, put in place uh, procedures to uh, uh, prevent radicalization. Uh, it also uh, engages um, other countries because we've seen that the, the threat is transnational. Uh, people are crossing borders. So we should have also a common sense of the threat uh, shared within, within the EU, which is not obviously the case today. What would you like to see the EU do? What at an EU level, what at an EU level can be done to improve our, our, our fight against terrorism? We have uh, in the past missed uh, opportunities uh, to go fast on several key issues such as the PNR uh, or the reform of the Schengen Code, for example, uh, border code, um, because uh, of the inability of the EU um, to clearly have a common position on terrorism. Um, I think what is clearly and really important for the future is to have institutions that can bring together uh, a common uh, knowledge, analysis and assessment on the threat. What is it and how to, uh, to tackle this threat altogether. You're also an expert on the financing of terrorism. What actions can the EU take in this particular field? If we speak about the microfinancing, which is the most important, the financing that is required to finance uh, terrorist operations, if we look at the um, main operations uh, carried out by ISIS in 2015 uh, in France and Belgium, you see that the terrorists resorted on not only encrypted devices uh, to cover their actions uh, or to move money, but also on anonymous uh, tools. Uh, uh, credit cards, for example, uh, debit cards. Um, they had also uh, SIM cards, anonymous SIM cards to communicate together. So this is something where w we, the, the EU and, and EU countries can have um, a, a direct uh, impact on, on, on their ability um, to use such tools. Uh, and so it needs to be done uh, as fast as possible because well, several countries have, also, have already implemented uh, prohibitions of such tools, others um, haven't. So it is something that we can, we should move together and agree that is something uh, important and, and, and to, to be to be corrected. See that we hear today that Raqqa has fallen, and there has been a lot of concern in the media that former combatants will return to Europe. Do you see that as a major threat that you will have to follow? For what we see from now, from now and, and, and since the, the beginning of the year, is um, no, th there's no massive return of combatants from uh, from the field. Uh, for France, for example, only six combatants, uh, six men, have returned from Syria and Iraq since the beginning of the year. So what we've what we've seen uh, is these individuals uh, going elsewhere, relocating uh, to other places, um, Southeast Asia, uh, Sahel region, uh, other places, the Middle East, Yemen, Libya, uh, Tunisia. Um, and so I think it, it, it leads us to, 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 to engage and to uh, really put in place more cooperation, information sharing with third countries uh, outside of the EU to be able to track down these individuals, uh, neutralize them, arrest them at some point.